In this episode, we're summarizing the seventh episode from season two of the Wire series titled Backwash. The episode first aired on July 13th, 2003. In the beginning, Bunk Moreland and Beatty Russell proposed they use a computer to monitor dock traffic to Sergeant Jay Landsman. Initially outraged, Landsman becomes more accepting when Bunk makes him aware that Lieutenant Cedric Daniels is willing to grant them space in his off-site detail to work on the Jane Doe murders. Bunk tells Russell that they have to back off a bit from their investigation so the Union dock workers feel like they are no longer being investigated by law enforcement. Meanwhile, Colonel William Rawls is still fixated on persuading Daniels to take on the Jane Doe homicides, but Daniels remains firm in his decision to stay with the police department. Kima Greggs and Roland Prezbeluski investigate leads from Chardine Inez's friend and discover a brothel. While Detective Prez scouts the area, they manage to find the elevator that would lead them to the sixth floor. As we catch up with Herc and Carver, they head out to buy a bug to enhance their drug trade surveillance. We know they want to move up from working cases at the street level and they decide to up their technological game. Despite Carver's doubts about the cost, Herc convinces the shopkeeper to provide a trial period by keeping their credit card information on hand. They hide the bug inside a tennis ball without proper paperwork and manage to monitor Frog with some success. However, when Nick Sabatka arrives, Frog unknowingly picks up the bug and throws it away, leaving Carver and Herc unable to retrieve it. Later on, Lester Freeman and B.D. Russell continue their dock traffic study using the cloned computer. Freeman observes clean checkers to gain familiarity with the process. They identify Thomas Horseface Pakuza working on a ship and seek assistance from Kima and Prez for surveillance. They trace the container to Double G's warehouse, witnessing Sergei meeting with Proposition Joe and Greg captures the encounter on camera. Bunk, Freeman, and Russell believe they have to find a way of persuading Daniels to take on the murder cases since he is the only one who would support their thorough investigation. Freeman passionately appeals to Lieutenant Daniels and eventually he later goes on to visit Rawls and agrees to take on the cases with full support. Lieutenant Daniels makes it clear to Rawls that he will take on the Jane Doe cases, but only on one condition, that he is not limited in any way. As we catch up with the dock workers, Nick becomes more involved in illegal activities by becoming a supplier to Ziggy Sabaka's dealer, Frog. Unknowingly, Carver and Herc pick him up during an operation. Ziggy receives a distressing letter claiming he fathered a child with a notorious woman leading him to drink at a bar. Feeling down, he realizes Nick's success surpasses his own in the drug trade. Nick discovers the letter was meant to be served by a notary and traces it back to Maui's phone number, revealing it to be a prank all along. Maui continues to taunt Ziggy with a song from the jukebox, while other stevedores try to convince him that he can take on Maui in a fight anytime. Remember, I am summarizing this entire series, as well as other popular works of literature, movies, and TV shows as well. Subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss the next episode or series. If you would like to see the playlists of our summaries, click on the link in the description. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter for additional content. If you find our content valuable, consider supporting us on Patreon if you can. Doing this helps my channel out tremendously. I really thank you for your support. Frank Sabarka attends a seminar on robotic dock technology. Disturbed by the job losses it causes for the dock workers, he meets Nat Coxon to request an extension of his union leader term for another year. Despite the rotational system for white and black leaders, disappointed with his lobbyists' efforts, Frank vents about his family's financial struggles and demands more action to get the canal dredged delivering a box of cash as motivation. Frank is extremely upset that technological advances in shipping are causing the number of workers needed to run the docks to decrease. He complains that the future Sabatkas won't work on the docks like his family before him.
New Charles, a dock worker, sustains a severe leg injury while handling freight, resulting in the loss of his limb. The stevedores promptly come to his aid and they take him to the hospital. Frank and Nat visit Charles' family, and Frank discreetly hands Charles' wife an envelope filled with cash. When Charles' wife opens the envelope she received from Frank, she is shocked to receive an envelope of cash wrapped together in rubber bands. When Nat inquires about the source of the money, Frank refuses to say a word and walks away. As we catch up with Bodie, we see him buying tower-shaped flowers for D'Angelo Barksdale's funeral. Stringer Bell visits Brianna Barksdale's house and finds her inconsolable, while Donette seems more practical about the death. In prison, Avon Barksdale and Weebay Bryce talk about D'Angelo's suicide, with Avon dismissing him as weak for his selfish act. The funeral attracts a large crowd and Bodhi's flowers receive praise. Afterward, Proposition Joe proposes sharing his supply of drugs with Stringer in exchange for a stake in the Barksdale organization's profits. In the second to last scene, we see Jimmy McNulty with his estranged wife Elena. They are sitting on the steps facing the backyard of Elena's house, watching their children play. As their two kids play, Elena and Jimmy finally share a laugh together. McNulty takes this opportunity to try and convince Elena that they should be together again. Elena quickly denies Jimmy and says that although she would like for them to be friends, she can never trust him again. She also tells McNulty that if he gives her enough time, she might probably wish him happiness also someday. We see firsthand yet again just how much Jimmy's extramarital affairs have destroyed Elena's ability to trust in him. In the final scene, we also see Lieutenant Daniels speaking with his wife, Marla. Daniels explains to her that he loves his job working for the police rather than becoming a lawyer and moving up the political hierarchy. Marla responds by telling Daniels that although he loves the job, the job does not love him or anyone. Daniels responds by saying that he fell in love with her mind. Marla ends the conversation by saying she fell in love with Daniels' ambition. That was episode number 20, titled Backwash. To watch the next or previous episode summary, click on the link in the description or at the end of this video. In the description, you will also find additional links for supporting our channel. I will see you on the next episode. Goodbye. We upload new videos every week, so subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to hit the like button as well. Click the notification bell to be notified of when we upload these videos. See you on the next episode of Culture Screen.